This video takes a look at Module 2, Lesson 12, Division of Integers. So today you guys are going to discover the rule for dividing integers. So we are moving forward from multiplication, which has been the past few lessons, onto division. Um, you know you have this when you are able to apply the rules for dividing integers to solve mathematical problems. And our standard is 7NSA2C. Apply properties of operations as strategies to multiply and divide rational numbers. Now we're focusing on the division of rational numbers component. So the opening exercise here, um, what I want you to do is start filling out um, both of these bubbles based on what is, what is in red. And I'm just going to talk through um, some things I notice here in terms of how multiplication and division are related to each other. Now, first of all, if I look at these first two, so if I look just here right now, okay, this shows me that order of multiplication does not matter, okay? So I'm gonna make a little note of that. Uh, make that much smaller for you guys. So the order of multiplication does not matter. You end up with the same um, uh, product no matter what, as long as you're multiplying by the same factors. Now, on the other hand, order of division does matter. And I'm going to write this down here. Order, sorry about that again. So down here, order of division does matter. If you divide in a different order, if you change your divisor and dividend into a different order, you're going to get a different answer. Now, in terms of how multiplication is, rated, is related to division, if you take this product and divide it by one of the factors, you get the other factor. So, for instance, if I take 24 and divide it by 4, I'm going to get 6. And then if I take 24 and divide by 6, I'm going to get a quotient of 4. So that division helps us find out that other factor. Basically, when and we looked at this when we were dealing with um, unit rate and ratio and proportion problems, right? We often divide it to find that scale factor, which is that other number that must be multiplied. Now, when we're looking at integers, um, same thing here, order doesn't matter, negative 6 times 4 is negative 24 because they are different signs, you have a negative and a positive, that is going to produce a negative product. Same thing here, we have the same problem, just flipping order, you will get a negative product. Now down here, we have the 4 being negative, now because the 6 is now positive and we still have only one negative and one positive, our product is once again negative 24 and this changes down here because both sign numbers both of your factors here are negative so you get a positive product so order of multiplication does not matter order of division does now let's scroll down and some of this stuff is going to look very similar but there's going to be that extra step and that extra step here is in green and the green is this division component now remember if we are trying to divide your bait and how that relates to the multiplication right if I look over here and just deal with my positives if I take 24 and divide it by 6 I get 4 if I take 24 and divide it by 4 I get 6 so if I have negative 6 times 4 negative 24 divided by, let's do negative 6 first, is going to get this positive 4, okay? And negative 24 divided by 4 is going to get this negative 6. There is a direct connection between multiplication and division because they are inverses of each other. Let's look at it down here. If we have negative 4 times 6, which we know is negative 24, then negative 24 divided by negative 4 is going to get this positive 6. 
whereas negative 24 divided by 6 is going to get this negative 4. Okay? And then if I go down here to this last one, and I have, let's just look over here, negative 6 times negative 4 equals 24. 24 divided by negative 4 is going to get this negative 6. And 24 divided by negative 6 is going to get this negative 4. So there is that connection between multiplication and division. Now, what I want you to do is use those notes on the previous page and answer questions A through D to the best of your ability. Then you're going to come back and check with what I have before we move down here for the actual rule for dividing two integers. For A, I use the previous page, so the examples we looked at here, um, which is hopefully what you guys did as well. Um, because it's asking division problems that produce, so that's saying in the past. Um, but negative 24 divided by 4 got us negative 6. Negative 24 divided by 6 got negative 4. So when it's talking about quotient, it's talking about the answer. It's asking which questions gave us an answer of negative values. And these four equation got us negative values. And that moves us on to B. If the quotient is a negative number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and divisor? So what I noticed here is in my dividend and divisor, at least, or one, just one, not at least, but one of the two numbers is negative. So here the 24 is negative. Here the 24 is negative. Here the 4 is negative. Here the 6 is negative. But one of the numbers is negative. Okay, the signs are different. They're not the same. You have one positive and one negative, and that seemed to produce a negative quotient. Similar to how with multiplication, and I'm going to write this down. Similar to how in multiplication, if you add different signs, the answer ended up being negative. Okay. Now, in terms of examples that produced a positive quotient, meaning a positive answer, it looks like both um, of the numbers, the divisor and the dividend, are the same signs. So either they're both negative, like the first two examples, or they're both positive, like the second two. And this also seems to be similar to multiplication. In multiplication, two negatives multiplied together created a positive product, and obviously two positive products stayed positive. So it looks like our rules for division seem to be quite similar to our rules for multiplication. So that's going to lead us down here to the main point of this lesson, which is the rules for dividing integers. Um, a quotient is negative if the divisor and dividend have opposite signs, or I'll just put different signs. That means one is negative and one is positive. So if you need to put that as a note to the side, you can. But one number is negative and one number is positive. Now, in terms of a positive quotient, they have the same sign. So either both numbers are negative or both numbers are positive, okay? So that is the rule. This is the important part for dividing integers. And I'm just going to make a note down here. Division and multiplication have the same number for negative numbers. Okay? Same exact rules. If they're the same sign, it produces a positive answer. If they are different signs, it's going to produce a negative answer. And do not get this confused with adding and subtracting, okay? Those have their own different rules. So just keep those things in mind. Gets a little tricky when you're asked to do multiple things because sometimes you can get confused, but the more you practice it, the more you review it, the better you'll be at not getting like your addition rules confused with your division rules. Exercise 2 has us answer a very good um critical thinking question. So what I um, 
suggest you do is read through this question, which is the quotient of two integers always an integer? Meaning, if you divide two whole numbers, so a whole number and its opposite, so that means like a positive whole number or two or a negative number that's not a fraction or decimal or zero, do you always result in one of those whole numbers? Okay, one of those whole numbers or the negative opposite. So I encourage you to think about that, um, try that, and then we're going to walk through that. All right, so let's say I have this question. Let's say I have negative 24 um, divided by 6. Now, negative 24 divided by 6 produces a negative quotient because the divisor and dividend have opposite signs. They have different signs. You have one negative and one positive, and 6 goes into 24 four times. Now, let's look at just switching this question up a little bit, and let's do something like 6 now um, divided by negative 24, and let's see what we get. Now, the answer, the quotient, is still going to be negative. Why? Because you have different signs. You have one positive and one negative. But if I work this out over here, 6 divided by negative 24, and we know my answer will be a negative, 6 divided by negative 24, if, and you can just write division as a fraction. If I divide the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator by 6, I'm going to end up getting a negative one-fourth. This is not four. This is negative one-fourth because your divisor is greater than your dividend. So the answer to this part here, if you just flip the order, is negative one-fourth. Negative one-fourth is not an integer. It is not an integer because it is a fractional component. It is a rational number. Now, we still fit the rules. We divided two integers because 6 is an integer, so is negative 24, but we did not end up with a quotient that is an integer. So in terms of my overall answer here, the answer is no. Uh, quotients of integers do not always produce um, integers, or the quotients of integers are not always integers. Uh, negative 24 divided by 6 got me an integer of negative 4. But if I just switched the divisor and the dividend and made it 6 divided by negative 24, because order matters in division, right? And I'm going to say, write that once again, order matters when dividing, okay? Um, so when I switched this, I ended up getting a negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth is a, is a fractional component. It is a rational number. So this proves that is the quotient of two integers always an integer? No. Moving on to exercise three. Uh, your goal with these, uh, with part A, B, and C is to ultimately answer this question. Are the answers to these three quotients below the same or different? And explain why or why not. Okay, so go through, find the quotient for each of these three expressions, then say, are they the same? Yes or no, and why? When you are done with that, come back and check the video. The answers for exercise 3, A, B, and C do all produce a quotient of negative 2. So your answer should have been yes. Um, in part C here, so A and B are negative 2 because the, quotient, the uh, dividend and divisor are different signs. So they produce a negative quotient. Now for part C here, uh, once you simplify what is inside the parentheses, you get a, two, a positive 2. And then this is like the opposite, right? The opposite of 2 is negative 2. So all three end up getting that negative 2 quotient. All right, lesson summary. Main thing I want you to really take note of are division rules are the same as multiplication rules. Okay, that's kind of the key important thing for you to take away from this. 
Um, different signs mean you'll have a negative quotient. Same signs mean you'll have a positive quotient. All right, go through and answer these four problem set questions. These type of problem set questions should look very, very similar uh, to what you've seen with a multiplication lesson. Uh, when you are done with this problem set, come back and check the answers, and that will wrap up this lesson. We're going to wrap this lesson up, uh, as we do with most lessons, with our problem set. So for number one, just make sure you have the correct quotient. So if you need to pause and take a look at that, please do so. Uh, for number two, um, two and three and really four are asking about uh, patterns. Um, the pattern of the columns is... I see two positive answers and then two negative answers. That's because the first two in each column have the same sign for the divisor and dividend, whether it's both positive or both negative. And then the bottom two questions in each column have different signs, which we know produces a negative quotient. Now, uh, three, describe the pattern you see between the answers for A and B. A and B, the answers are a half because your dividend is half the size, but your um, divisor is the same number. Because you're going from 48 to 24, but keeping four, your divisor, the same, your quotient is going to be half as much. Now, for four, that's asking the same thing, but it's asking you to relate C and D, and 21 is a third of 63. So therefore, your quotient is going to be a third as much in column D as it is in column C. Notice once again, our divisors are the same. So take a note of those. Uh, if you need to pause to write them down or modify your answers, please do so. Uh, remember, the key point for this lesson is right here. Division rules are the same as multiplication rules. So if you know one, you can you should know the other. You don't need to relearn anything. Um, as long as you know your division facts and your multiplication facts, should be pretty easy because all you have to focus on is, is my product or quotient positive or negative based on whether or not the signs are the same, which would reduce produce a positive answer. And if the signs are different, you will get a negative answer.